What's that smell? I don't know about you, but I'm thirsty as fuck. Thirsty, thirsty, thirsty as fuck. Hey, look at me! Thrill me. If you come back in here, I'm gonna hit you with so many rights, you're gonna beg for a left. Thrill me. Beg for a left. Thrill me. Hey, look at me! No! Stinks. Hang on! Hello and welcome to the year six episode, part one of our year in review for our sixth year in podcasting. Uh, my name is Justin. With me are always Sam and Jackie. Good sixth year to you guys. Good sixth year. Yes, sir. Uh, to you. To you. <laughs> Be excellent to each other. Yes. <laughs> oh, you two are such dick bags. <laughs> shut up, you two. Shut up. I said shut, shut up. Uh, I remember when we had Torn Atkinson from the Caustic Soda podcast on here, and I asked him why they stopped so s- suddenly from doing podcasting, and he told me, uh, when you get to year six of podcasting, uh you'll know the answer why. Hey, we're still going. We're still going. We're still going. I guess those guys might have had more stuff going on. Yeah, they uh, actually took the time to write their episodes yeah, and do research. True. It's a lot of work. Bunch of, we're just loafers. Yeah, we're just loafers. Yeah. We're just bullshitters. Um, this could be our last episode, though, because I, uh, Jackie and I will be leaving uh, this coming Wednesday to go to Hawaii, where we will probably get quarantined for the rest of time. Thanks to COVID-19. <laughs> sure. But if you're going to get quarantined, hey, Hawaii's well, a pretty good place to do it, right? Am I right? I think so. Why not? <laughs> it's not like, it, you know, it, it could be Des Moines <laughs> where you're quarantined. As long as they got Netflix, right? <laughs> Sam doesn't even go outside anymore. No, I'd He's like I'd good. like to be quarantined. I don't want to go to work anymore. <laughs> Please. I think it would be great. <laughs> you have to stay home. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. It's like getting really? suspended when you were in uh, in grade school or yeah. high school. Like, bummer. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I'm being. It's, I get to be quarantined. Right. <laughs> I get to stay home. Yes. Thank you, sir. I have another. Yeah. Are you saying that arbitrarily? No, I really mean it. Um, okay. So what we do on this episode is, uh, if you've never listened before, we break down uh, our favorite 10 movies uh, that we d- discussed on the podcast in the last year. Uh, that are pretty much like, you should stop what you're doing and watch these movies. Um, This episode, we will be going from 10 to 5. This is a two-part episode because it takes that long. So in this episode, we'll be doing uh, the 10 through 5, and then the next 4 through 1, plus our three favorite movies of 2019. So uh, we're going to start with Jackie, your number 10 movie. Hello, Mary Lou. From Uh, night two. Yeah, really? Huh, okay. Kind of a surprise, which we did a podcast on. You picked it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I liked it because of the costumes. Yeah. And Mary Lou just kind of had it coming. Yeah. And I liked how she was like making out with that guy on the prop couch behind the stage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's like, you're a loser. <laughs> and then she goes out and he accidentally gets, catches her on fire. I mean, like, yeah, that, that shit happens all the time at high school. Pick a, pu- buckets of blood. Right. Right. Um, accidentally lighting people on fire mm-hmm, with a firecracker. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure, sure. And, you know, I'm pretty sure that back then, yeah, all clothes was just fam- flammable. Well, it was all rayon. polyester. Yeah, polyester. <laughs> it's actually made of gasoline. You know, you bring up an interesting thing about Hello, Mary Lou, is it is, sh- she's essentially, it's a slasher movie, essentially. She's yeah. a supernatural slasher, uh, a spooky ghost. But the one, the, the difference between her and, like, your gen- uh, a typical slasher character motivation is like they're just an unstoppable killing machine they don't have any motivation they just like killing people their motivation is to use knives inside of people right exactly yeah. whereas mary lou's motivation for killing people is she is just a straight up stone cold bitch like <laughs> just a real nasty lady <laughs> well she had a nice tiara though i did mm-hmm. like her tiara right um and the first person she knocks off right which is probably my favorite because i think you see the cutting board right the where the paper cutter and you think that she's going to get her, you know, 
drug in there and then they're going to chop her head off, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But no, they just throw her ass out of a window. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> like, there's so many things that could happen and they set it up that way. I think maybe they didn't set it up intentionally, but uh, so many different ways that these people could die. And then the the lady who gets smashed inside the lockers, too. Right, right. I totally did not see that coming. And then what does the janitor think when he walks in there? The, the When he and finds a, like, goo... Just yeah. Like, man, who spilled all this raspberry jam in here? There's a raspberry jam in a locker room. Who does that? These teenagers are weird. And then he just mops her up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd Cindy go? No, no idea. Nobody ever found her. But we sure do have a bucket full of raspberry jam. <laughs> Don't go in the dumpster. <laughs> oh, no, it's it's high school, Sam. They got to they got to pinch every penny because, you know, of, of Republican government cutbacks. Uh, and so. They use the raspberry jam. They recycle them and send it to the kitchen. You've got a nice uh, toppings for your uh, toast. Pastries. They're kids. <laughs> hope you like your. Uh, hope you like it extra jammy because we got a lot. <laughs> yes, this Danish is made from uh, Sarah, who is actually Danish or was, <laughs> but go. she's dead now and made into a pastry. <laughs> Uh, I remember nothing about this movie. Yeah, you didn't. I don't think you liked. I it didn't like much. it, but yeah. I well, I was when you were talking about it. I was like, oh yeah. And then I think of something. I was like, Nightmare on Elm Street two. And they're like, oh yeah. And then I think of that. That was Nightmare on Elm Street two. <laughs> and so like every time you guys were talking, I was like, no, that wasn't night. Okay. And then he goes crazy and he can't remember. No, that's Nightmare on Elm Street two. <laughs> what the fuck did I even watch this movie? Yeah, I, we did I an still don't remember it. it. Uh, yeah, she's a fifties prom queen bitch that uh, gets turned into a spooky ghost and just starts killing teenagers because she's a straight up bitch. That the one that started at the diner at the beginning? No, it started. It starts at the prom. I just... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't your cup of tea, Sam. It wasn't. Yeah. I don't remember it. Yeah, I guess not. But Jackie loved it. I did. Number it was 10. my number 10 pick. Number 10. I, uh, I'll give it an honorable mention. I thought it was okay. Uh, My number 10, Chuck Norris in Breaker Breaker. Breaker Breaker. I it made it a little higher up for me. Yeah, um... Breaker Breaker was a surprise for me, for sure. Sure. Because I just thought, as I've said before, I'm not the biggest of Chuck Norris fans. Uh, I, I absolutely love the Delta Force. But after that, like, I really don't like Invasion USA very much, even though I quote it all the time. Uh, I don't really like, uh, I don't even like Lone Wolf Quaid, Quaid that much. And everybody fucking loves that movie. Um, I just think he's just so doofy that I just can't get behind him. But... So when I went into Breaker Breaker, I was like, okay, this is a trucking movie with Karate Guy. I'm probably going to be disappointed in this. There's just no way that this can work. Its own gravity will implode yeah. it. And and it's early on in his career. Yep. Nobody talks about it. Uh, it's, it's just not going to be very good. And boy, did I love it. It is my absolute favorite Chuck Norris movie because I'm not going to count the Delta Force because that's an ensemble Sure. Uh, uh, but Chuck Norris lead breaker breaker was by far my favorite and like almost got me to be like, maybe I should watch all these movies again and just mm-hmm. see if I actually do like Chuck Norris. Cause this shit is awesome. <laughs> yeah. My favorite was the, uh, bar lady who was dressed up like a baby doll mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that apparently was the town slut. Right. Right. Or just one of the mayor's girlfriends. Right. Right. You uh, had like a, a harem thing going on. Uh huh. Uh huh. And this the scene where he unleashes the Chuck is probably like like it should be more iconic. Yes, him farting the rocket out of the back of the motorcycle in Delta Force is like the most eighties action movie thing you could possibly imagine. But that scene where he just runs around and beats up an entire town with his hands while they're all running away from him mm-hmm. is fucking hilarious. Yeah. Uh, especially the guy that takes it in the nuts is one of the best <laughs> nut <laughs> nut tragedies I've ever seen. And then he gets stuffed in a barrel. And then he gets stuffed <laughs> in a barrel. I mean, he says nut. He gets cock punched and jammed in a barrel. The, that town didn't just get their ass kicked; they got embarrassed. Like, oh yeah. I mean, the other towns around this town, like you know, because in, Sam and I grew up in a small place. We all know each other in small towns, not just yeah. like within our towns, but we know the people in the other towns uh-huh. too because it's, there's only so many people. Yeah, you, you can count them all on your fingers and toes. Uh, they had to know, like, dude, did you hear what happened to Rock Ridge last week? I mean, seriously, 
one guy came in there and embarrassed them. He stuffed yeah. a man in a garbage can. No, that <laughs> happened when we were like in high school. Like one kid would beat up like half of a high school uh-huh. at a sporting event. You hear about it. Oh, those guys from Salmon River Wieners. <laughs> they got beat up by one guy. By a freshman. <laughs> by a freshman. <laughs> Then you end up playing as a guy. That guy is a fucking animal. What the fuck? I'm pretty sure that man is 27 <laughs> and eight feet tall. Which is possible because huh. in small towns, you just get to go to high school until you're done. Right. <laughs> so you don't Play want to sports eligibility, whatever. He's 32. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the uh, county is paying that guy a salary. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's not just the fact that it's a trucker movie and I love all trucker movies. I shouldn't say that because there was one that definitely didn't make this list. Uh but it, it's just as good of Chuck Norris silliness as you can, as I can imagine. Yeah. So, and then there's trucking on top of it, and the trucking doesn't suck. The trucking doesn't suck. Right. It's pretty good trucking. And it also they run over an entire town, which is pretty awesome. With which the is trucks, pretty good trucking. And at the base of everything, the whole reason for this altercation is a caper involving TV dinners. Right. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Breaker, breaker. Number 10 for me, Sam. Uh, my number 10 was a weird one that we just watched in between. Dark Angel with Gary Daniels. Oh, right. Where Gary Daniels is like a cop from a different country, but he just shows up and freelances his way uh-huh. through the whole fucking movie. Right. And, and he's, he's as Gary Daniels as you can possibly get. He doesn't have the long hair. He's got the short hair, which yeah. is always a disappointment. But uh, black leather jacket. Uh-huh. Uh, guest jeans. Guest jeans. Like, so Gary Daniels. And uh, Why do I not remember this? You didn't watch it. Yeah, you don't like the karate movies. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um... He also, in this one, beyond his character being the biggest dickhead on the planet, that he's doing everything illegal, freelancing through law enforcement, he himself personally is doing a bunch of take that Van Dams uh-huh. through the whole thing. Oh, absolutely. Like, look at my butt, Van mm-hmm. Dam. Oh, look at these shoulders, huh? Oh, you can do the splits? Look at that. Oh. And then he's really pretty snarky about it. <laughs> <laughs> I might actually enjoy this one if you yeah. no, you would probably Dam. like Gary Daniels movies. Um, she did. She liked uh, Fist of the North Star. Fist of the North Star was awesome. Yeah. Uh, are you sure that it was called Dark Angel? Because that's also the same title as uh, uh, I Come in Peace. I thought you're. I thought you were talking about a different movie. Wait, no. Um, Dark Angel was with. Uh, that was I Come in Peace. Oh, right, Lundgren, right, right, right. Yeah, this yeah. was um, Deadly Target. Oh, Deadly Target. Okay, yes, I do remember uh, Deadly Target with. Deadly Target. So, yeah, my number, the movie I liked, number 10 the best, was one that I couldn't remember the name. (laughs) (laughs) Liked it so much. That's the unfortunate thing about those 90s action movies. A lot of them just have such generic titles. Well, in my defense, one of the movies on my list got scrubbed because it's going to next year. So, that one sort of assumed the 10th position. Okay, there you go. There you go. Yes. But, uh, yeah, okay. So, in this one, he's like your typical... I'm chasing a bad guy from another country, yeah. and the LA guys are like, "No, you're a, you're a loose cannon. We're sending you back to your own country. Get on that plane." And then he never gets on the plane. He just keeps manhunting. They're like, "Yeah, it's illegal for you to carry a weapon and shoot people here." And he's like, "I don't care. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm, do I'm that." All right, Daniels, what you gonna do, boy? Well, do you see my butt? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm gonna karate chop you in the nut. Uh, actually, of all the Gary, you were the worst with accents. His is so bad that you just nailed it. You just it. nailed Gary Daniels. Yes. You are Gary Daniels. We need to buy you some guest jeans and a black leather jacket. <gasps> and That's been my dream since I was in elementary school. He doesn't wear wife beaters uh, or white tank tops, I should call them. Uh, he just wears white T-shirts, like, exclusively, yeah. doesn't he? Well, That well, are tucked into his pants. I think he does the tank top thing, too, but it's okay. not the, the sort of tight-fitting undershirt tank mm-hmm, top. Mm-hmm. It's just a tank top tank top. That he has to tuck into his pants. Yeah, because... most likely you got to tuck your... Yeah, you, you always do that. Well, you my, just... my, you, I want you to see my butt. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Get a look and at this, these buns. Pants are up a little too high. So the <laughs> butt crack is clearly visible through the jeans. Right. Yep, this sounds like my kind of movie. Uh, Yeah, no, it might be Jackie Deadly Target. Uh, What else you got about it, Sam? Oh, no, I mean, just, it was that was why it's... The, it's just fun. Wasn't there somebody else in it? Was Ch- Chad McQueen wasn't in no. it? No. It was just Gary Daniels. Pretty much. Yeah, okay. 
uh, the Chad McQueen one was from the year before. But yeah, it's it would be we'd be remiss if we didn't have a year of this podcast that Gary Daniels wasn't on somebody's top ten. We didn't have Gary Daniels in last year, did we? No, he was in the Chad McQueen, Chad McQueen, McQueen one. Yeah, yeah with no. uh, the Ultimate Warrior. It's good. We need to. We probably should spend more time on Gary Daniels. They're hard to year. come by, yeah. unfortunately. Like we've we've done a pretty good job. Like him and Cynthia Rothrock, we've covered their catalogs pretty good. That's available, uh-huh. but there's just a ton of shit that for some reason Amazon Prime's like, oh, we're not putting that crap on. Yeah, dude, you're Amazon Prime. All the crap is on you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now that's true. We have been like, whenever they come up, it's like, oh, they're on. Let's go. Hey, watch Gary this. Daniels, uh, David Heavener uh, is another one that yes. like, we won't pass on and. Now Chad McQueen, Chris Mitchum, and uh, uh, Chris Lee, where, Lemon is now Chris in Chris Lemon, yeah. yeah. is now in all But not stuff. Lee Majors, too. But not Lee Majors. Fuck Lee Majors, too. <laughs> we need to move on, because I'm just not talking enough. Oh, I see how it is. It's all about me. It is. Uh, number nine from Jackie. King Ralph. King Ralph. King Ralph, wow. really? <laughs> just really liked it. You know, wow. I kind of did, so, too. It was kind of dumb, and... Uh-huh. But I mean, there's just something about just the ridiculousness of of a Las Vegas showman who has a sucky act anyway, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That goes and tries to be a royal, and the only thing he didn't do was rip his pants. Right, right. Yeah, his, his butt didn't come out. Right. Uh, but I really liked the uh, the Swiss princess. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. With the with the deep voice, it's mm-hmm. like, I want you to spank me. <laughs> do me on this balcony right now, King Ralph, and he's like, goo. Yeah, that was kind of fun. I I just really liked it. I thought it was uh, cute and entertaining. There is, as we described, we can't really say what it is about King Ralph, but there is something like charming about it. It's John not that Goodman. The, it's not. I don't know if it's even him because the singing and dancing and that piano scene is Sucks. just so painful to watch. Um, but like, I I I do think that like when it wraps up, you're like. Man, you guys had a really shitty script. It wasn't funny, except for only in a couple spots. But when you wrap this up and they arrest uh, John Hurt, uh, you're like, good moral? What the fuck just happened here? Yeah. Th- this turned into a good script all of a sudden at the end. What the hell? So you, it ends on a good note where you're like, huh, you know what? I, I kind of feel good about that movie. Yeah. <laughs> if you'd stopped it, if you stop 10 minutes before, you'd be like, this is a piece of shit. This I hate this shit. movie. <laughs> and I thought it was fun that they they played darts and they drank beer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then they're like, you want to go for round two? And then they go outside and play with spears. Right, right. I thought that was kind of cute. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's maybe a... more shit would get done if people were a little more, you know, relaxed. Less stuffy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And then you get a little too relaxed and you end up with, you know, fucking Mike Pompeo giving hand jobs to fucking dictators. But, you know, whatever. I'm not going to make this episode political. <laughs> as long as he's got some good hand lotion. Yeah, you don't want a chafed wiener. Yeah, no, that's the way it's worse. You know, you're giving dry handies to dignitaries? Come on, man. Dick- dictators. Dignitaries? That's a, he's just freelancing. He's just giving hand jobs to whoever. Right. <laughs> he's just behind the dumpster at Tacos, Tacos, Tacos. Right. He's just totally pushed Terry Calls over. It the pump. Hey, oh, you like that? <laughs> oh. oh, yank, yank. Yankee, Yankee. Yankee doodle dandy. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> King Ralph. <laughs> King Ralph, my number nine. Yeah, and John Goodman is like, I mean, in that movie, his trajectory was clear. Like, yeah. he's superiorly talented. He's fantastic. And even though that scene is just so cringeworthy. But you can, it's just because you feel bad for him. If it was like fucking John Belushi, you wouldn't give a fuck, right? If he's doing that scene, but it, because it's John Goodman, you're like, man, you had to take some lumps, didn't you, buddy? Mm. You really had to get shit on to get to where you are. You know, it's odd because that scene's painful to watch, but in terms of the story, that's what's happened to it, happening to him as you're watching it, right? Nobody's liking that performance. Right, right, exactly. So. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Like, it's, But I think it was supposed to be fun. Like, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think most of it was, yeah. Uh, okay, number nine from me. Uh, this is a shock that it makes the list because this is a movie that, like, should I, I should have been sick of this movie by now because I love it this much. Uh, but I never seen it until this year. Was Chud? I like that's a staple of okay, like I everything. Guess. It's a cornerstone. Everybody's seen Chud. I mean, yeah. it's like one of the first things that like. 
when you start renting VHS tapes, it's like, dude, you seen Chud? Uh, you got to watch Chud. It's like Basket Case or, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dead Alive. Sure. You know, it's just, a, it's just a kind of horror. And it's not a horror movie. It's a science fiction movie. Uh, Cornerstone. It's a big deal. And I'd never even seen it. And I thought it was awesome. Okay, wait. I've... So how do you feel about the fact that it, it just stops? I loved it. There's no resolution. It's not that there's no resolution of anything. They don't even start coming to a resolution. No. And then the credits roll and you're like, but that's not the end. It is. <laughs> I think that that's what the movie's saying is like, yeah, we can't beat these things. We're fucked. It, we can't resolve this situation. Uh. I think shut. they lost the last two pages of the script. I we're think, like, fuck yeah. it, just shut it down. <laughs> just shut it down. <laughs> Roll the credits. Well, this is all we got. Yeah. I don't think that it's actually about the chuds. I think it's about government corruption, and that does get resolved. The guy that's the head of the, uh, by ineptitude and greed and corruption, sure. makes the chuds, gets his comeuppance. But what are you going to do? Kill a bunch of this new species? Like, uh, send in the flamethrower, guys. we got to get Lundgren in there and start just murdering an entire species of what used to be bums. Uh, there, there's still people inside there. Yeah. I don't know what resolution you're expecting. Maybe we'll find out in Chud 2, Bud the Chud. Yeah, but, Chud uh, the Bud? Bud the Chud. No, it's Bud, Bud the Chud. Bud the Chud? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't realize they made a second one. Oh, yeah, yeah, Bud it's... the Chud is supposed to be even a bigger deal. Oh. Yeah, it's supposed to be bananas. Uh, I love the makeup. Um, John... Uh, Oh God! His it's name. It's not Hurt. So he's the third Hurt. No, 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 it's no. Not William or John. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it's John Hurd. Hurd. Um, there you go. Uh, who died recently? Did he? Yeah, I didn't think he was that old, but he was like seventy-two. Huh. Um, uh, not John Hurd. Uh, John Leguioni, I think, is what his name is. Uh, did the makeup? Okay. Um, the makeup is fantastic. It's Stan Winston esque. Uh, and then I I looked up uh, this guy's trajectory. Um. He may be a bigger deal than Stan Winston is. Like, he is still working to this day. And after about, after Chud, he basically was a top tier makeup artist. And now he just does all of the shit for Pacino. Like, he uh, did Pacino's makeup and The Irishman. Huh. Uh, it, any of the last, he, he was, uh, when he when Pacino was, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Joe Paterno. Uh, he did the makeup for uh, that. Uh, I think it's just called Paterno. I didn't see it, but it looks good. Like uh, the yeah, makeup. Sure. He looks like Joe. He turned Al Pacino into Joe Paterno. Even though Al Pacino didn't turn Al Pacino into Joe Paterno because he walks in and goes, oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was doing that as Hoffa. Come this, on. This looks bad in here. <laughs> oh. oh, these guys are touching guys. Um, But uh, yeah, so like. Really cool makeup effects. I love creature features in general. Um, they're like it, you can make any type of creature feature, and I'm gonna like it pretty much because I I think it like opens up the imagination. Like mm -hmm. whereas like you know vampire movies, they're just fucking vampires. You're not really getting creative. They just bite people, and then well, they become vampires. Vampire and then those people, they're vampire sexy. movies. If there's not gratuitous sex in it, it's just not worth it. They're not even. Why worth it would then. they need to have just because it's like, oh, we can't go outside during the day, so let's pork let's a lot. Let's pork a lot. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. Uh -huh. They don't get married; they just move into each other's coffins. Uh, name uh. one vampire movie that has gratuitous sex, Jackie. Good call. Twilight. Uh, yeah, boy, there's a lot of banging. Woo! There's a fair amount of the sexy business in Bram Stoker's The. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola one's got some yeah. titties in it. Yeah, it sure does. Um, werewolves are probably a little bit more sexier, though. Uh, werewolf movies, there's a lot more gratuity. In yeah, it. nothing like a drooling dog humping a mm -hmm. lady mm -hmm. to really get you going. Hey, man, cats. You know, people are weird. You know, everybody, yeah, okay. uh, people yeah. have got their own taste. But I am saying, like, like even werewolf movies, I, I do like them because they're creature feature s. You can do some more stuff with a werewolf than you can with a vampire. Uh, but slashers, no, they just walk slow and have a big knife. That's dumb. But creature features, like the whole thing is open. You can be as creative as you want because you're making it up as you go. There's no, there's no, uh, uh, nothing to, you're not adapting uh, somebody else's work. You're making your own. And I, I just love creature features and Chud sure. was a goddamn good one. Hmm. So Sam. Number nine for me. I'm going to give a little shout out to Freddie Olin Ray. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mach 2. Mach 2. 
with Brian Bosworth oh, yeah. and Worf. <laughs> Uh, did I watch this no, one? I don't no, think you did. didn't. And this was a big. You're gonna have. You might have to because I. I'm still debating. Uh, Denise Richards was in it too. Denise Richards yeah. is in it, and uh, it's one of the vault movies that Winorski got all that footage, uh-huh. and so they would just like challenge each other to make these damn movies, right? And then stuff another movie in the middle of it. This one is my favorite of all of those movies that I've seen. Because the chase scene that they jam in and how they work it into the movie. So you're on an airline and it's the Concord is the other movie they're stealing from. Uh-huh. It's one of the Concord right, movies. Right. So all of a sudden you got Bosworth flying the Concord, which makes no sense. No, none. And then uh, what is Worf's film? Michael. Michael Dorn. Michael Dorn is like a government official who then... It's almost the same fucking uh, plot as Cliffhanger. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. you just borrowed that. And they said right around the same time. So he's like, oh, I'm going to do some Cliffhanger up front, and then I'm going to jam these other two movies in here. So Michael Dorn is heisting the Concord that's just traveling across the U.S. for whatever reason. I thought it was the last flight. Was it the last yeah, flight? I thought it was the last flight. It was flight. like a test flight or something. Yeah. No, I thought it Well, Con- Concord test flight. No, not there's just, only like eight people on the plane. Right, right. No, I thought it was like the last one. They got some press there. Denise Richards okay. is there because she's like, uh, I thought she was like one tough cop or something to keep an eye on things. Yeah. So what? whether she gets onto his trailer or not, he ends up pulling a heist mm-hmm. on the airplane, which is them, then him and his partner jumping out of the Concorde. Right. And parachutes. <laughs> I don't think you can do that, actually. I don't think yep. you can slow the Concorde <laughs> fast too. enough that you can jump out. No, you can't jump out of a normal airliner. No, you can't. Uh, but they, well, that's they not parachute. True. That goddamn D.B. Cooper jumped out. Well, okay, one. There, that's why he I was probably saying, didn't make it. Agree, He's disagreeing. Still probably impaled by a pine tree someplace. He got away with all 200000 <laughs> of those dollars, could you imagine? Uh, but they parachute into another movie. Uh-huh, right. And it's an Italian <laughs> crime film that has a chase scene and a rocket launcher in it. <laughs> and he gets blown up. And you're like, wait, that's it with him? Yep. Because <laughs> they literally, they had the footage and they're like, well, let's, see, let's just write, write something around it. The most Fred Olin Ray thing I've ever seen, because it was a Fiat uh-huh. <laughs> in the chase scene. And he didn't have one. He couldn't find one. <laughs> right. Didn't even try to find one. Uh-huh. Knew a guy with the black Mazda. Right. Knew a guy with a printer. <laughs> Put the black Mazda in front of the camera. Stuck the sticker Fiat over Mazda. <laughs> and fucking shot the take. And you're See, like, it's the same. <laughs> it's the same. I was, I was astounded. You can't tell the difference. <laughs> I do. He's like. That one's a fiat, especially because the footage, the uh, the archival footage is like from a like has a totally different uh, film yeah, it's a stock. Diff- yeah. And so that when they they're splicing it back and forth, it's like, dear guys, it's a different car. But more importantly, there's grain in one of these yeah. things. There's cigarette burns. And then there, the, uh, you clearly tell that the other one's much more modern film. Yeah, absolutely. The the blending of the two of them was an impossible task, but. Just by the numbers, he played it as straight as he could. The angles are all right. <laughs> car is a different car, but he, the angles are all right. Right, right. The film stock is different. He's probably using digital, but it cuts together seamlessly, other than the fact that you can tell that it is a different movie. <laughs> and exists for no reason. For no reason. Yeah. No, it's it's a great scene. Yeah. Um, even even the rest of it, uh, we were expecting to be go into it and be like, oh, boy, this is going to blow ass. And it was a lot of fun. The French air traffic controllers mm-hmm. who just get saucy all the right, time. Right. And you can tell that's him just letting it happen. Like, dude, I'm just going to throw this. So, like, when he gets to just be silly guy, uh-huh. Fred Olin Ray's movies are special. They are special. Yeah. And this has Fred Olin Ray's, like, I get to do whatever I want here. I'm going to be silly guy. He makes these French air traffic controllers ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It's hilarious. Mm-hmm. And then he has this, like, old guard FBI or CIA guy that was like, the guy who trained Bosworth, who's now a pilot and a secret agent or some bullshit. And he like falls down to death. But right before he does it, he's like, oh, it's OK. It's going to take a lot more than this. To 
get this old cowboy down. <laughs> and then they like hit an air bump and he falls out of his chair and he's fucking dead. Right. <laughs> right after he says that, you're like, oh, that's funny, Fred Olin Ray. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, Mach 2 from 2000. And I'm sorry, Denise Richards is not in not. that. She was in the one with Dolph Lundgren that was super boring. That sub- super sucked. You know, yeah, that can- no, 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 no. It was another... We've stolen an airplane movie that you didn't watch. Uh, yeah, we watched a bunch of those airplane movies. This yeah, year. Cliff Roberts. Cliff Robertson's the only uh, real uh, other name in here, unless Robert Pine is Chris Pine's dad. Uh, but uh, the gal isn't anybody. But they, mm-hmm. she was fun with Bosworth, right? In the plane, yeah. It was a good. It was. It was just a fun time all the way through. Yeah, uh, I think you might uh, feel the same way as I do about creature features. You might just like airplane movies, Sam. Do I like airplane yeah, movies? Yeah, they're like trucking for you. Yeah. Are they? Yeah, man. Airplane movies. You're like the cool. one that's been pushing these damn things. I just watch them. Yeah, maybe. And apparently enjoy all of them. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm to blame. <laughs> yeah, you like the airplane movies. <laughs> I like all the movies. All right, number nine for, or number eight for Jackie. Convo. What? Oh, boy. Okay. That was the one that he just mentioned. Like, I like trucker movies. There's one I'm not going to mention. <laughs> Convoy. <laughs> Yeah, this one made my list. Sexy okay. Chris Christopherson. Not sexy, was, really was, skeezy and slimy. Oh God, he's, he's so got sexy. Dis- dirty. He's dirty. It's okay. Trailer trashy. And I've got a weird thing for the, for the trailer trash. We we already established this in previous episodes. It's just so weird. And he's just so sexy in this movie. Oh, he's and then so gross. I just like that. You know, they go into this town and just start running into shit. Um, I've got some news about Convoy that uh, we missed. Sure. Uh, unless unless maybe it was under the surface that we were thinking it, but we didn't I don't think we said this on the podcast. Uh it's an allegory for Jesus. Chris Christopherson is Jesus. Chuck and Jesus. Chuck and Jesus. All the people are behind him following him. Uh the the you know, and then they gets burned on the cross that happens to be a big rig. After he has to go bust out one of his disciples. Yeah, right. I'm not sure who that's supposed to be, I guess. Yeah. It's Peter. Uh, yeah, Peter's... Uh... We got Rowdy. Actually, bar. no, Paul was arrested by the Romans, wasn't he? Probably. Yeah, I think that's what all the letters... Did Jesus, did Jesus spring him? No, I don't think he did. That would be fun. <laughs> it would be fun if he did. A lot of little... Maybe they found that in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Like, oh, we... You know, the Catholic Church wanted to leave this part out, but Jesus <laughs> totally sprung him. <laughs> Fucking popped him right out of jail. It was all... uh. It's all Danny Ocean style uh, snatch and grab, you know. Yep. <laughs> all right, got twelve of us. We need a we need a Paul, Peter, and John here. To... What's weird about those sandals? It's not just that he can you know walk so quietly; he's still fast. <laughs> but yeah, uh, okay, Jackie, I'll let you talk about the movie you wanted to now instead of Jesus. That's it. Okay. Jesus caper is more interesting than God. Yeah, the... ah. she's like that. Tell me more about this Jesus caper. Yeah, the Jesus Caper was more interesting than Convoy. I will give it that, but uh, I don't know. I made my list just because of Chris Christopherson. That's I just, I just think enough. he's so sexy. <laughs> um, Sam, it's not the movie that I was talking about. Uh, that Texas Lightning movie. I didn't I watch watched. that. Yes, one. Yes, you and I did with Cameron Mitchell in the uh, the bad. Oh, thing. that one yeah, wasn't. That can yeah. go fuck itself. Uh, they didn't do any trucking, trucking, but they were truckers. Um, Convoy actually was on the outside looking in for me. Because really? I do think it's an important bad movie, uh, like especially it. in the uh, trucking vein. Um, it's not wild and outlandish. and It does have some, uh, God, this plot is so stupid. But um, the where they're in the, the dirt area where it gets super fucking dusty when they're taking the shortcut is almost like a Hal Needham-esque. Like, this is kind of dangerous, guys. Mm. Um, and it doesn't even need to be in the movie. Um, and then just how stupid it is with the entire thing. Like we got to get this guy away from the cops. And then he's like, I got to go back home by. And they're like, okay, see ya. We're going to keep on trucking. Yep. I don't know where, uh, I guess. Well, and he becomes a political influence. Nazareth. Yeah. Like he changes America because of trucking. And I mean, it's, you know, again, he's Jesus, but it's trucking Jesus. Why would you do that? I don't know. <laughs> They also had a trucker orgy as well. Right. Where everybody's taking a shower. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. You know know that things got weird. Yeah, turned into a pickle park pretty quick right there. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't fault you, Jackie. I kind of liked Convoy. I just wish it was more than what it is. I wish it wasn't so goddamn boring. Yeah, it needs yeah. to be about thirty minutes less. I think the only part I liked about that was the waitress having shameful sex with him in the back of the oh truck. my god she was so shamed <laughs> i don't want to do this but i have to she's like yeah this shameful horrible sex is better than having sex with my husband <laughs> did you see that guy it's ernest borgnine <laughs> yeah which gross. Took some, like you had to kind of piece that shit together right, right? yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> borgnine. all right uh number eight from me uh stefan dorf Child Steffendorf in the gate, uh, the with uh, what's his buddy's name? We just watched the gate too, uh, Ricky or whatever his neighbor buddy. That's super heavy metal, cool kid, mm-hmm. uh, but totally nerdy at the same time. Where they find uh, basically the Necronomicon and uh, read from it and open a portal to hell yep. uh, that lets little little dudes in, little 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 squidgy guys, yep, little little. Guys, this is these are demons. <laughs> just just kick them. I mean, they don't even have wings or teeth or they have teeth. Like well, the problem is, is that, yeah, maybe there's it's just a lot of them. Adults could really kind of sweep these things uh-huh, up, uh-huh. possibly literally. <laughs> uh, but Girl. it's tiny demons against a child, right? <laughs> so he's got his hands full. All right, he's and just he's, a kid, and he's trying to you know get this girl to like him, right? Uh, yeah, it, there is like this 80s, almost Goonies-esque feel to it, uh, not not with content, but just like the being a kid throughout the entire thing while they're fighting demons from hell. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's just a weird like smash up of those two things that like makes the Goonies seem super like innocent and G-rated. Oh, they're looking for treasure. Uh Stefan Dorf is fighting demons. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a part about it's most of the way through where you can tell that his character is just like, fuck this shit. I want my mom or my dad to help me right, with this. And right. they can't. And he's like at that breaking point where a kid's like, help. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And he can't get any. Right. Right. And that's actually the thing I might like about that movie the most. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of The Gate, and it's been about six years since I've seen it. I didn't watch it with you guys, but I do like that aspect of it. Yeah, I, I I was surprised by it because I didn't know anything about it. We just picked it purely on the cover. We, we watched it the same day I watched Chud. That was one of the best movie days That's I've ever had. so like, fucking strange. Because you did the same Because thing. Mark Roman and I watched those two movies on the same day yeah. about seven or eight years ago. Yeah, they ago. make a great double feature. It is weird how that works. Yeah, yeah there you go. Uh, we're probably not alone. But, uh, yeah, and I thought that there were some really good, like, horrific things in it, some terrifying things, the guy in the wall... Um, when the, uh, monster essentially, or when the demons essentially make Mecha Shiva yeah. and become one giant monster and, uh, uh, little Billy has to fight him. I thought it was like, dude, if I was a kid, this shit would fuck me up. Like, yeah. I wouldn't have liked that. If I, I wouldn't have liked it at all. No, that would have been a nightmare. That one would have caused some nightmares. And there's, there's, it's one of those weird, rare horror movies for us that like most core, core, uh, cult horror movies are very gory. Uh, this had very, I don't know if it had any gore in it. No. the it had a dead dog. Yeah, that's true. But it, it, wasn't, it wasn't gory. Yeah. He was just dancing with it. It <clears throat> almost is like, because it's not rated R. It's PG-13. I think it? so, yeah. It's almost like this one is really like, whoever made this was like, I'm really going to scare the shit out of some teenagers. Yeah, dude, this is going to fuck some shit up, man. Um, the because the practical effects are good, it's just not gory. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like the when the hole in the ground's happening and all the wind and the lights and everything. Right. I mean, that looked great. Yeah. It looked great. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's not there for you to make out during uh, when you're in the movie theater, teenagers. It's there to make you uh, beg for your mommy yeah. at night. It didn't scare me because you know you're an I'm adult a, man. I'm a grown ass man. I don't get scared. Grown ass man. I had guy. demons didn't had, scare me. Six buddy wisers to put me to sleep after that <laughs> scary shit. <laughs> uh, no, after that I had some I had some warm cookies <laughs> <laughs> with marshmallows, please. And I slept with the lights on. Yeah, the blankie. Uh, Took all the books out of my room, <laughs> just in case one of them was the Necronomicon. 
Um, yeah, the gate. Uh, there you go. Sam, number eight. Wolf Devil Woman. Wolf Devil the Woman. The Taiwanese yeah. bonkers bonanza. Why do you keep picking movies that I can't talk you... about? I think that this is a conspiracy to shut me out of this podcast. It's your fault because you're always shopping or napping. And it's your fault. You don't want to watch the karate movies. Oh, she God, might have liked another karate movie. She might have liked Wolf she, Devil. You would have probably liked. Well, the thing is, is that she might like half of them. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I only like, like a bunch <laughs> about what I like too, and I like karate movies. But uh, yeah, so this one is about a woman, Jackie, who's uh, raised from a baby by wolves. Mm-hmm. She's feral. She's uh-huh. a feral woman who's also a ninja that can fly. <laughs> And then she's approached by a uh, prince who is also a flying ninja. Uh-huh. Mm, of course. And his sidekick, who's named like Gary or something. Right. <laughs> and he becomes a flying ninja by the end of it. Uh-huh. Or just sort of like announces later on, like, oh, I am a flying ninja, but I had to do the comic relief thing for a while. But now that we're all fighting, yes, flying ninja. Uh, and they are looking for a magic turnip. <laughs> this sounds amazing. Uh, so they can defeat a bunch of Power Ranger bosses. Uh huh. Oh, and yeah. it turns out that the king is also the bad guy, right? Yeah, like weird plot twist. I didn't see it coming because I couldn't really understand what was happening half the time. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And the the prince becomes magically powered uh, evilly and falls and, in love with the wolf devil woman, of course. But his dad poisons him with bad magic. And so this comic relief and the feral ninja flying wolf lady have to defeat everything and then save the prince and, I guess, fall in love and move back into the forest. And try Mm. to keep bunnies away from her for the rest of time. Yeah, you don't want to have bunnies or chickens anywhere Uh around her. She just rips them straight in half. With her bare hands. Bare hands. Rips them in half. Need a knife. Just They just come right apart. They're like, uh, like, it's like uh, mozzarella sticks. (laughs) String, string rabbit. Yeah, and she, she does makes. it in slow motion, and she like joyously rips them apart. Yeah, like, she flies through the air and, like half chicken. <laughs> it is insanity for sure. Um, you know, it's it's like everybody's talking about parasite. You know, all sure. the people are talking about parasite in, in South Korean movies, and they're like, hey. Turns out South Koreans can make good movies. Yeah, we knew that. There's lots of good South Korean movies. Uh, but. Are there any good Taiwanese movies? I'm sure there's some good ones. Because they're all, every single one I've seen is just bonkers. I, it's, I, I'm probably a broken record on this. Whenever we talk about a movie from Taiwan, it's like, they see the Shaw Brothers movies. They see the Common Rider movies. They're like, oh, the Tohei stuff is really good. Oh, man, this Golden Harvest stuff is really good. We're behind. So we have to do <laughs> all of it in every movie. Because every movie is like the six, the five deadly venoms and a Power Rangers thing. Uh-huh, like, right. It's like Common Rider got mashed up. There's three different movies worth of stuff in every one of these Taiwan films that we've seen. And all of them are just so baffling. Like, I I just don't know what they're doing over there. And it's, unfortunately, um, we don't have a lot of their content over here. I am sure that they don't, their, their volume is not near as much as stuff out of uh, Hong uh, Kong. Tokyo or Hong Kong. Um, but... Uh, uh, it seems to me that we haven't seen one more modern than say like 1980, like six or seven. Yeah. Uh, I'd be curious to know what the Taiwanese are do up to nowadays with yeah. the film industry. And it, you know, th- these ones that are made in the eighties, you would think were made in the seventies. Were made in the seventies yeah. in Japan or Hong Kong. Right. Cause they look so bad. Yeah. Um, super budget and bad. And it's, uh, it's almost like, you know, with the Philippines, they have their own film industry yes. that has its own theme. But it's not bonkers like the Taiwanese. Prima. It's just because you they have no regard for human life, and you can do amazing, crazy, dangerous stunts in the Philippines. Uh, but these are just fucking weird as shit, and they're not even like 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 weird J- Japanese movies. They usually involve ghosts. All all the all the Japanese movies that are like what the fuck usually has some sort of spooky ghost. Yeah, in the it. ghost shows up, uh, and that doesn't make sense. But this is always like like you're saying like like uh, like a Shaw Brothers movies that where everybody's got superpowers and just say the weirdest fucking shit to each other. Uh, but I, then I love them. There's always like a secret lair, magic cave, right. temple, or something, 
that's full of these heavy costume, high mm-hmm. set piece mm-hmm. things, and you're mm-hmm. like, what? Where is this? What is this film? I don't understand it at all. Um, yeah, I, I don't fault you on that one either. Uh, it's on the outside looking in for me too, but uh, I didn't, didn't yeah, make it. I really list. liked Wolf Devil Woman a lot. Kicked ass. Jackie? Uh, my number seven pick was Heat. Heat! With Berth, Burt Reynolds. With Berth. <laughs> Old Bertha Reynolds. Bertha Berth Reynolds. Bertha Reynolds. <laughs> it's a ripoff. Uh, no, I just... There's just something really cool about this. Like, one, it, I like was, that he helps... It's a cool movie. Uh, I like that he helps the hooker and that she gets her revenge mm-hmm. on that little shit face. And then I like that, you know, he makes this nerdy friend who wants, you know, to be cool mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. wants to protect himself and then gives him an opportunity to move to Italy, which is what he wants to do. Right. Um, even though that guy dies. <laughs> so... No, he makes it. Yeah, he makes it. He makes no, I it. thought he died. He jumped in front of a bullet. He but... jumped and he got shot, and then he was like, man, I don't want to be tough. You taught me the reason of life by almost dying. And Yeah, right. Meanwhile, Burt Reynolds is like, yep, just another day for me. Right. Because that's what is so special about this movie for me is that this is just Wednesday for him. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. Exactly. I mean, that the... the it. it... I, I guess I don't have anything to contribute because I was just about to say, you know, that's the thing about wild card too, is it's just like, I think they even say that it's Tuesday, uh, but wild card kind of sucked. Wild card uh, kind of sucked. Uh, he was fucking cool. It wasn't necessarily badass. It was cool. He was cool. It was yeah. cool. Wild card had none of the, the, none of the feeling. Uh-huh. It had all of the same events. Right. But they forgot the feeling. Right. Because he just, Burt Reynolds' character just is so broken inside and disconnected from everything in reality and humanity that he just doesn't give a shit. And not giving a shit is pretty much what you have to do. Like, you can't be cool if you give a shit. Yeah. You got to not give a shit, and then you're cool. He's so cool that he regularly loses $100,000. Right. Because... He could have his. What is he going to do? Like go to. Italy he's going to go to live in Italy. Yeah, yeah right. He's going to go to Italy with a hundred thousand. That's all he needs to. Which I think he's. I think he needs to do some more math on that. <laughs> 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 um, and that you know that's a, a, another thing. Like that scene where he is gambling all that cash and winning and winning. He's like, some days you got the luck. You know it's coming. You know he's not going to win. He's gonna blow it. Because that's his character. Yes. And so but so you know it's coming, and it doesn't matter that you know what's coming. It's still, to me, it was like, God damn it, he didn't fucking win. I really wanted him to win, even though I don't even know if he really wanted to win. No, see, I when I watch that scene, I'm watching him look her in the eyes, and he's like, you know I'm going to play until I lose this. Right. I'm not going to try to win this. I am going to play... Until it all is gone. And I didn't, I want him to go to Italy. He can't go to Italy. Because I care about the character and I want him to have a good life, but he doesn't want to have a good no. life because he's fucking cool. He's too fucking cool. Yeah, he he was awesome, Jackie. I absolutely agree with you on that one. Yeah, it's my number six. <laughs> oh, hey. Ooh, hey. hey. Uh, it's, uh, believe it or not, an honorable mention for me. That was one of, yeah, I really liked that movie a lot. My number seven. Total surprise for me. I thought I was going to hate this movie, but I loved it. Who killed Captain Alex? Oh. I thought that was... <laughs> that was this year? Yep, it sure was, guys. Uh, it wouldn't have made my list either no. way. But really? It, yeah, no. Huh. Uh, this is Uganda. Um, yeah. I really, really liked it because it could have been Birdemic, and it wasn't Birdemic. It was smarter uh funnier, sillier, uh and generally crazier than Birdemic, but it should have been Birdemic. And I uh just the fact that like you have to look at each other at the end after watching it and say who killed Captain Alex? That never got resolved and then you figure it out. Oh, oh. I know who killed Captain Alex. Yeah. <laughs> he was it's, an idiot. Yeah. When you you cuz you but the Production quality forces you to compare it to films of like, the Birdemic, Birdemic yeah, caliber, right, right. but that's the technology's fault. Mm-hmm. That he has access to. He's a genuinely better filmmaker. Absolutely. If he had the same resources, you would see some shit. Right. 
absolutely. And that, that was a, another thing about it is it's not just, and, and it's outside of the movie, but it's directly tied to the movie. It all becomes one thing. It's almost like uh, uh, throwing a football at the movie theater when you're watching the room. It's not necessarily, you know, part of the movie. It's an experience is learning all about Hollywood and, uh, yeah. you know, learning about uh, Ugandan film culture and a yes, it sucks over there, but they still have this like experience that is so, you know, uh, not necessarily mundane because I don't consider watching movies mundane, but how they do it. And uh, uh, it's just so very normal. Whereas, you know, their, their country is, you know, just getting shit on so hard that they can still all get together and enjoy making movies. They love it that or much the, and, and have that budding, you know, aspiration. I think the, it's just cool. The communal movie viewings. Where right, they that too. Have like a master riffer mm-hmm, in that. And mm-hmm. so it's, it's all very interesting. Uganda. Well, and I think that that's what made the movie so special was the the overdub of the guy commenting. Right. At first, we didn't like it. We were like, dude, is this guy going to shut up? At the be- at the end of it, you're like, it's not. it wouldn't be the same without it. Wouldn't it wouldn't be the same without it. Right. Agreed. Right. Yeah. No, I really liked Who Killed Captain Alex. I was super surprised that I did. Uh, I think I think it's required viewing. I think it's that big of a deal. And not just bad movies. Yeah, you, you have to like bad movies to like Captain Alice. It's really bad. Um, but uh, I, I just think it's an important film on any... In, in, it is an important film. When you talk about any appreciation for film, uh, you can't... You got to give that guy credit. Oh, you know? yeah. You gotta, that's, you just fucking keep doing it, buddy. You, you just it's keep like, on hard working. to make a movie without money. Mm-hmm. Try to make one without like money or running water. Right. What or was, most of the equipment that you would actually need. Yeah, what was the budget? Wasn't it like nothing? Like 300 250 bucks or they, something. They I think they say it was 300 bucks, but mm-hmm. I don't think it really was. And they got an entire village to uh act and yeah. uh be extras in it and they all loved it and they had, you know, fake wooden guns that they just carved out, you know, because that's what they had to do. Mm-hmm. That's it's fucking man, I love that shit. Good for those guys. Yeah. Sam Number seven for me was Breaker Breaker. Breaker Breaker number seven. Yeah. Come on back, Trigger. My, my next two are repeats. So okay. Yeah. Well, Breaker well, Breaker. You got anything uh, to add about the old Breaker Breaker? No, I burned the TV dinner caper on the last <laughs> one already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The kid sucks. The kid sucks, yeah. But actually, that kind of makes it more charming. I think it makes it more charming. Uh, And his oh, mom. Yeah, no, the whole new dad thing where he totally is like look it's your new dad and then he never comes back no he doesn't he does like i'm a fucking trucker <laughs> like you see a, a panel van if, if you've never been in the back of one of these okay right. well this is what happens and then this is all that happens and the whole town the reason the this plot exists is the town is only sustained by stealing big rig loads. <laughs> like, that's their thing. They, they've got an entire comedy economy based on theft. Highway robbery. <laughs> and, yeah, and traffic tickets. And traffic tickets. Fuck. Uh, it's so silly and awesome and, and perfectly bad trucking movie. Uh, and Chuck Norris's van is the coolest van in this. Oh, of yeah, cool vans. it is. Yeah. God. I mean, can you, like, it just has so many check marks. Like, yep. Cool van. <laughs> Fucking town gets ran over. <laughs> Dumb plot. Guy gets punched in the dick. I mean, like, <laughs> it's everything. Like, now, oh, it, oh, there's a unicorn in it, too? Might as well. Might yeah. as well have fucking unicorns and dragons in it, because it's fucking hitting all of my buttons. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I'm going to move on to my number six. Okay. Uh, And I'm going to keep it rolling. Burp, burp. Black Dog. Black Dog is number, number six, six huh? for you. That low. That's low. <laughs> it beat out Convoy. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, that's that's that, out of my uh, Trucker series, that covers all three. All three of my Trucker series made the year in review. Mm. Did all three of your Lundgren movies make it? I, I don't think. You checked off none so far, have we? None so far. I don't think. I think only one of them is going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Even though Peacemaker was really fun, it is just dry in the middle. Okay. Uh, break or uh, uh, Black Dog, Jackie. Why so low? Why right. so low? Because there were just other ones that I enjoyed more. Oh well, yeah, obviously, obviously. But, but I mean, I mean, I just want to talk about why I liked it because by the time I get to six, 
I'm struggling because I liked all of these movies about the same. Oh, oh, you mean it's starting to get tough to like to to whittle, whittle it down. Yeah, and gotcha. so then I had to think like, okay, so which ones did I, you know? And and so this one ended up at six, and that and that's so, but it's almost like tied all the way to number one is what you're saying. Yeah, so it's, it's still pretty ranked high. Yeah, so for me, I mean, there's like a very minimal difference between okay. the next six. Uh, all right, now you're now you're and, not in trouble anymore. So I mean. I, I love Randy Travis, right? He's and fucking great. He's in it. great in this movie. And great and terrible. <laughs> yeah. And you know, Meatloaf was amazing. Oh god. And all of these like fucking truckers like stunts uh-huh. where they're, you know, out of control on the road and then he's, you know, they're trying to box him in. He's gotta he's gotta save himself. And then that dog, this is a fucking rando dog in the back of this truck. Yeah, right, right, right. Who ends up being pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as a family dog at the end, I believe. <laughs> uh, murder family dog. Murder family dog, right. Murder family dog. So, I mean, I just, it, I don't know. It was it was enjoyable. There was a lot of action in it. And it, just the hijinks. There was just so many weird hijinks. Like, why did you even let the truck leave if you're just going to steal you the shit out of it? stupid criminal. You were so bad at this. <laughs> yeah, it's like, this is like a really crappy plan, Meatloaf. Yep, yep. We're going to steal that load from us. We're going to steal it. We just had it. Also, make sure that we don't get an inept uh, truck driver. Make sure we get the best truck driver who's ever lived. I mean, he because he's Dalton. Like, yeah. he, he's like, uh, the we got to get a uh, bouncer. We'll make sure you get the top bouncer in the world. There's no such thing, guys. Get an inept truck driver. Somebody who's going to not fuck with this. Instead, you got a murderous nutcase who is willing to run anybody down in a truck at a big rig. Like uh-huh. he, he, he is, this man has no fear. Uh, Fresh out of prison. Super bloodlust. Bad call. You guys stink at crime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then let's run him off the road on a steep hill so that we can't recover the product. Right. And, and it'll just blow up. Exactly. Also, <laughs> we have to wait to pull this caper on ourselves. For after me getting done clipping my coupons. <laughs> That's right. And Tasani guy was there. Yeah, Tasani guy. Asahi. Asahi, Asahi guy. guy. Yeah. Tasani. Tasani. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's always good with the Asahi guy. Um. Yeah. No. Fucking Black Dog is so cool, dude. It's just the best. Uh, number six for me. I think I'm alone on Mount Olympus with this one. Uh, I don't know how Jackie doesn't like this movie. I don't know how I do. Breaking two electric boogaloo. Fucking hated this movie. Fucking I, loved it. It's higher on my list. Oh wow. Oh, <laughs> oh my. Yeah. Uh, Who's that kind of year? It's just too much fun. It's, it's too, too much, much fun. goddamn fun. I did not think this movie was fun. Uh, how? I don't understand you in any way. We hate singing and dancing, and we're like, you, look at this one, and you're like, fuck it. You <laughs> I don't like it. Are from a different planet. Uh, I don't get it. Uh, yeah, dude, it was awesome. I thought it was going to suck. I thought like the hype for it was going to be too much that it was going to be like almost like skate town USA or something like that. Sure. But, uh, uh, dude, it was just fucking nonstop crap. Uh, and like, y- like all of the best parts of Miami connection, uh, with dragon force. Sure. For two hours. Yeah, it's pretty much just a two hour dragon force concert. Um, See, and for me, it was like, you really want Popeyes, but then somebody brings you KFC. Mm, okay. And you're like, oh, well, I guess I'll eat it. Well, that's cool because we're not talking to you right now. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> you don't like electric boogaloo. Fried chicken burn. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I feel like I just got slapped in the gullet. It was just all of the bad 80s dance moves that you could possibly imagine wrapped around this silly, we got to save the community center plot. Sure. Um that should not have worked for me. I should have hated it, and I fucking loved it. I would like to have a copy of Electric Boogaloo. I liked it that much. Like, I would show people Electric Boogaloo, and they'd be like, dude, I don't like singing dancing movies. I'm a, I'm an actual dude. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not some weirdo like you. And I'll be like, dude, check your role. Let's check this out. I am still astounded by how good it is, considering... They turned that from pre-prod to the theater in six that months. That as well. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a historical film, uh, yeah. for sure. 
Uh, but it, I thought it was goddamn entertaining. Oh, yeah. That room or that uh, uh, scene where they do the rotating room from uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, I thought was really well done. Actually, mm-hmm. or maybe it's the fly. Uh, I'm not sure which came first. Was Nightmare before? No, it, it is the piece. The actual uh, construction is the same one used in Nightmare. Oh, oh, okay, okay. They just got it from West. They Grace. borrowed it, and that's yeah. where the thing that like. In terms of making this movie from conception to in the theater as fast as they did, mm-hmm. that they're borrowing huge pieces from other films right. in that period of time, like to do what they did here is pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, God, it's one of the few Golan and Globus movies that we hadn't gotten to yet, and yeah. uh, uh, man, I think I think it's a staple. I think it is awesome. I loved it. I'm ready to watch it again. Cut to Sam. My number six? Uh, yeah, your number six. Heat. Heat! Ah! <laughs> right. Yep. Because you said that earlier. Yeah, I loved this movie. It's, I, I did too. Yeah. It's about as Sam as you can make a movie. Like, if it you're is. like, I'm going to make a movie for Sam uh, without topless women, it's Heat. It is. Especially because it isn't concerned with conventional s- plot structure. Mm-hmm. Right. And that it has, it's almost uh, uh, Philip Marlowe esque in that way yeah, for you. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, uh, and well, I think the Philip Marlowe stuff, like the original novels, were pretty structured. Mm-hmm, but like mm-hmm. the uh, Robert Altman "Long Kiss Goodbye" version of Philip Marlowe is the same way, and that's one of my favorite movies. Right. Uh, this felt like it, acted like it, was cool like it. I kind of like Reynolds' character a little bit more. Uh, then I liked Elliot Gould. Elliot Gould. I agree with you there because I think Elliot Gould talks too much. Burt Reynolds just kind of shuts the fuck up and lets his hands do the talking. Yeah. Or his credit card blades. Right. Because he almost kills a man with credit cards. Yeah. Yep. And Stefano Demira is in it as Stefano Demira. Right. Which is awesome. It is awesome. Everything is about this movie is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I indeed. I it's it's awesome. Jackie, number five. Uh, so my last one for this episode is Angel Has Fallen. Angel Has Fallen. All I, right. I felt like Nick Nolte really stole the show, mm-hmm. and he was a total badass, and I super like that. Um, I don't know. I And, and you know, it's, it's Gerard Butler for me. You know, he's a good action guy. Granted, it wasn't as action-y. was a good action guy. It, it wasn't as action-y as no, some of a, his other films. No, he's a broken man. Yeah, but. Literally, his head came off. I, in a motorcycle accident, and they put it back on. What do you want from him? Jesus, negative Nancy. No, what do you want from him? He can't do stunts anymore because he broke his neck twice in two years. Who, people die when they break their neck once. That's how tough that guy is. Is He's like, well, I guess I have to not lift this heavy shit anymore after having my neck snap twice. Being sub, He's going to have to finish out submarine captaining. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I like the series. Mm-hmm. I liked that, you know, his character just keeps building on it, you know, and it, it progresses naturally. And then, you know, he's, this is my dad. I thought that was a nice twist. And I thought it was funny. You know, and, I thought it was funnier than the other ones. Oh, it was definitely funnier than the other ones. Yeah, for sure. Um, the one thing that, like, we don't talk enough about about banning is that usually in this type of film franchise, he's got a he's got a very stable home life. Um, usually in these type of franchises, he's either going to not have a very stable home life. The wife's on quaaludes or he's always gone too much. And there's some yelling scene between the two of them. Like you're always putting yourself at risk before your family. You love the president more than you love us. Uh, that never happens. She's very supportive. She's like, he's got a very stable and happy home life. The other thing that could happen is she gets kidnapped because they're coming after Ben and that never happens. And both of those things, would have sucked. Yeah. And they didn't choose to do either of those things. I and mean, I think that's cool. It is cool. <laughs> well, I think that they were going to kidnap her, but then Nick Nolte shows up. Right, and right, right. Yeah. Kicks some ass. And I thought that was great. Yeah. There was no like, you got to choose between the president and your, and your family scene that like is shitty. Like, in, of course, you're going to write that scene. That sucks. That never happened. And that's that's what I think is cool. Yeah. He can just do his job. I, uh, I find it astounding that that made it into a franchise. No, yeah, absolutely. Like too. how, because the first one is a standalone thing. Absolutely. And it, 
should have not worked. If you look at it on paper, you're like Antoine Fuqua. No, thank you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, this is a confinement film about a, a murder guy that the guy from the, the Sparta thing. <laughs> He's just going to shoot some people and I'm going to like that. The, the guy with his butt out. Huh? Wow. How about that? Okay, Whatever. And you watch it. and You're like, huh? And then everybody else did the same thing, made enough money. And then, of course, it's Lionsgate, wasn't it? Yeah. You're yeah. like, well, if we made money, we have to make another right. one, regardless of what it is. Yeah, right. So now there's three of them. Yeah. And thank God there's not going to be more because I don't know that you could do anything else with it. I, I think it's ran its course for sure. But uh... Yeah, I agree. I think three is the, the magic number on this one. But I'm glad that they made all three. I am too. And I'm glad that we own all three. Yeah. Um, They're just fun movies. So it had to make my list. Absolutely. Um, I, uh, you know, wrote a novel based off of the Angel Has Fallen or the, the Has Fallen franchise. My character is just Danny or Banny. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's it shouldn't have worked. It shouldn't be a thing. Uh, and it's basically the return to action movies, action, action movies. Sure. That, that Sam and I were talking about for years and then finally it just fell in our lap. We thought Paul Walker was going to be the guy that didn't work out. Sad to say. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Banning came along and it was like, oh, thank God. I have a dumb action movie to watch. Mm-hmm. It's new. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Mm-hmm. We need more of this. Sometimes you just need to stuff popcorn in your face. Yeah. And yeah. I don't want it to be Ryan Reynolds for my action. Guy. I, don't, I don't want Ryan because Reynolds. He's, yeah. I mean, sometimes he is really funny. And that's fine. I just want a guy to shoot another man in the face. That <laughs> is tough. It's tough. A tough uh, guy. Yeah, we don't actually need um, a guy that was cool in college to do our shooting yeah. for us. Like, that doesn't work for me. No, he's not a good action guy. No. I, I would agree with you. There's just something that my action men need to be gritty. Mm-hmm. And... Big. You know, big is another thing. Like, yeah. Like, big guys are cool. It, ladies, it doesn't... Because I'm the guy that's like, oh, he doesn't have the right size or the right build for this. But I don't know if necessarily big. It's just there's like a physical imposition that a person has. Because Donnie Yen isn't big. But you look at Donnie Yen and you're like, that guy's going to fucking kick my ass. Because you know. <laughs> you know. That Donnie Yen doesn't have to be big. But you, you look at him and you're like, that is lightning in a fucking bottle. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And it's not like JCVD is a big guy. No, but you can tell. But you can tell. But then you get guys like Gerard Butler and Hugh Jackman and you're like, I'm pretty sure that you could snap me over your leg. Those like, are big guys. I'm, I'm, you can just pick me up and throw me. And Ray Stevenson. And Ray Stevenson, yeah, absolutely. Dolph Lundgren was a really big yep, guy. Yep. Mm-hmm. I like the big guy action guys. Uh, but you're you're talking about live, whereas Ryan Reynolds is not live. He's just dude. He's just nerdy. He's just a nerdy dude. He's the one that's like, I'm a superhero in the bar because he dressed up like Spider Man, and you fucking push him down. And you're like. Drink beer off the floor, you little bitch. He's he's literally Spot in the Spider-Man universe, which I know none of, neither of you guys are going to get, but uh, Spider-Man people, you know what I'm talking about. I, oh, he's fine as Wade Wilson. I got no problem with Oh, that. yeah, no, I, I'm too. I'm saying yeah. in real life, he's yeah, sure. he's Spot. He's I am a superhero. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, no, you're not, buddy. Uh, yeah, I think the good call, Jackie. Angel has fallen. Number five for me, I come in peace. So Dark Angel did make Dark Angel. You fucking better believe it. God damn it! If I, I didn't like if I didn't much, put I, I come it. in peace in the, uh, my fucking top ten, throw me out of this goddamn podcast because I got no business. You didn't. I didn't get out it. of this podcast. You got no business. <laughs> yeah, I didn't put that one on my list. What either. you didn't either? Get out of this get podcast. Out of here. <laughs> Maybe it's because I've it... seen it in a number of times or something. That happens because like I didn't put um, mm-hmm. my favorite bad movie of all time into the list last year because I just assumed that. America 3000? Yeah. Yeah, that was in the year before. Ding. Whenever it was, I didn't put it in because I was like, yeah, this is my favorite No, movie. it literally was your number one that year. You No, ding. the year after I had to put it in again, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I guess you watched it twice. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, uh, Dark Angels, Flash, I Come in Peace, starring Dolph Lundgren, where a uh, juice-stealing alien comes to Earth and pilfers human juice. Adrenaline stuff? Yeah, adrenaline. And uh, so uh, there's a, there's a he's essentially a, a yeah he's a drug dealer. There's an Abraxas style uh, uh, alien chase that Dolph Lundgren gets mixed up in the middle of one of the craziest car chase scenes that I've ever seen, uh, and uh, just lots of shenanigans throughout that I think is like I think it's like the most Lundgren movie I could possibly think of, like just 
80s Lundgren in a nutshell. This is what we signed up for with this guy, and this is what we got, and I'm glad for it. I asked for this, and you delivered. He gave it to me. Yep. Yeah. No, I I, I don't know how it doesn't, but um, yeah, I just thought it was fucking sweet, huge explosions, cheesy one-liners, uh, insane stunts, um, doofy villains. Awesome sidekick. Awesome sidekick. Uh, His love life is fucking ridiculous. It's insane. Uh, and then the, of course, CD death gun that shoots CDs and kills Shoot people CDs. is just so iconically late eighties that it's like, yes, nobody's going to know what these are yeah. until <laughs> next year when everyone has a shit pot full of them right. until you buy rattle and hum on CD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boy, those took off a lot faster than I thought. Ooh, hey. Hey. <laughs> like, it's just uh, like, I, I, I'm going to say this again later, but if you like, if you define 80s action, late 80s action, it's it's this movie. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I I thought it was just fucking sweet. Did not disappoint. It exceeded my expectations. There you go. Yeah, I'm with you. I really liked it, too. Sam, number five. Let's close it out. Number five for me. is a film that I've been showing people for years and years and years. Uh, Debbie does Dallas. Navy SEALs. Navy, <laughs> Navy SEALs. <laughs> Navy SEALs. He just shuts you down. Navy SEALs. <laughs> Navy SEALs. You have to say it like that, too. Okay. All right. It's such a... It's terrible. It's a real bad movie. It's really bad. It. They're the biggest dickheads ever. It's stupid. And all they do is barely make their huge fuck-up less of a fuck-up. And it wasn't even that bad of a deal anyway, because they're just, like, surface... They're handheld missiles. They're just handheld missiles, guys. <laughs> they're not. They're you not. Sell these to weapons. everybody. Yeah, I mean, it's not ten of them, really. Oh, it's not in the Navy gas. Seals. It's not anthrax. No, I mean, well, he shot his friend. Yeah. That kind of was sad. Yeah, or he but, got his friend shot, or he shot himself, or he died from a brain aneurysm. The jury's still out on that one, Jackie. All right. Yeah, uh, it just doesn't line up. It's the it's the magic curving bullet from the grassy knoll scenario. Uh, he can't have gotten shot by those guys. <laughs> But, um, Sam. Well, other than it's just been a treasured film of mine for many years because of how bad it is. Mm-hmm. I it's just a little too much. The you complain about the marine scene and aliens, aliens. Sure. Uh, I think I like that scene. I think it fits in that movie. But this is that scene for two hours. These guys are dickheads yes they are <laughs> well he parks his car in a green and then gets the car off of the tow truck as the tow truck's driving i literally hate these guys no yeah. i have to hate these guys i hate these guys and that's hard for me to watch a movie and be like yeah dude watch this because you're gonna hate these guys <laughs> you're gonna hate these I guys i guarantee it it's sort of like the one of the other ones that i've shown people for years when I'm like, oh, you want to watch a movie that's going to piss you off? You show them Vertical <laughs> Limit. And they're like, yep, I'm fucking mad. Oh, we got to do Vertical Limit. I'm doing Vertical Limit soon. this year. Pretty it'll soon. Be, it has to be done. It'll be it'll be soon. Yeah, I actually love that movie. <laughs> I think the only reason it's not going to be my pick for the after the two weeks here is that the one I am picking might not be on Amazon anymore. So we got to like, yeah. n- once it showed up, it's like, oh, got to get that one yeah, in. Right, right. The, uh, the other thing with this movie is... uh the boys are back in town. Oh, I can't God. listen to that song now without thinking of that scene where they're running around playing, playing golf polo it's, in the golf cart. It's just the shitty it's shitty version of the volleyball scene from Top Gun, which is shitty. Which is shitty. With right. less, with more shirts. Right, right, right. More shirts and less uh, abiding by rules. <laughs> they're not abiding by the rules of golf. The gentlemen or society. Top Gun at least are playing by the rules of volleyball. True, true. Uh, no, these guys just suck. They are just suck so bad. Uh, so if you can handle that, yeah, I think it's there because it's bananas. It's bonkers. It doesn't make sense. It's terrible. It's, I think why it's such a special movie to me is because I, I, when can you find a group of heroes that you're supposed to love that you hate more than these guys? Right. You can. That is a high bar. what it is. And that's what makes it special is like epic fucking fail. Or no. You don't hate the SWAT guys near as bad. Uh, The one. No, not not SWAT. That's with uh, Colin Farrell. Uh, The one with the Schwaz movie with uh, Gernfright. No. Gernfright. Yeah. The uh, DEA movie. What the hell was that? Yeah. We 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 said. Sabotage. Sabotage. Like those guys 
but you don't like that movie. You fucking hate that movie. Sure. Uh, but yeah, sabotage. You're supposed to think that they're heroes. Maybe I couldn't. No, tell. they're I bad couldn't. guys. They're just bad guys. They're bad guys. So no, no, it's Navy SEALs. It's Navy SEALs. Yeah, they're supposed to be yeah. heroes, and you're like, oh my god, I fuck, fuck these. It's also fuck like. These guys. Someone making this was like, oh, this is going to be like a promotion. This is going to be like a recruitment film. People are going to join the Navy. And it's a real bad look. It's a real and bad it's look. It's a real me. bad look. <laughs> like, uh, there's going to be many congressional hearings, guys. <laughs> they may shut down the Navy SEALs because of this film. <laughs> so you didn't think you'd have them like rescuing people and having successful missions? You just have them go in there, fuck some things up, not really fix it, and then the movie's over? Right. All right, whatever. <laughs> Would I have gotten the flag if we were married? Oh yeah. man, bad acting. That yeah. is, that scene, the the funeral scene, is just so cheesy and bad and over dramatic that 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 in itself is maybe enough to be like, you should come here for this movie and watch this. <laughs> yeah. Just that funeral scene is so bad. The Michael Bean yelling at Joanne Wally about, we're out here putting it on the line. <laughs> that was really fucking bad too. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, man, I wish I liked that movie, but I just can't because I hate them. <laughs> but I understand. Yes. I understand. I think it's a either you love it or you hate it movie. Um, so uh, good call. All right, guys, that'll wrap up uh, episode one. We will be doing part two next week. So come back for that. We'll, where we will discuss one through or four through one. So enjoy your week. Get to the chopper. Fans of Stinker Madness, iTunes thinks you don't like us. What? How is that possible? Well, it's because you haven't given us a review yet. Go to Stinker Madness on iTunes and take just a couple seconds to rate and review us there. While you're at it, hit up Stitcher.com as well. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at forward slash Stinker Madness and email us at talk at We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening and get to the chopper.